This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone. Uh, in the last class, I was uh, detailing the way in which you can create masses. And uh, I had a very detailed demo of how to create masses using Vivid. Um, the different ways of creating it, uh, both the solid masses and the void masses, uh, how to use them, what is uh, what is a plane, what is the use of the plane, how will it help in creating massing, um, what is the use of a split element in creating massing, etc. in a very detailed manner. Um, in fact, the over video overshoot my time calculation, it went almost to two hours, one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, but it gives a clear idea on what has to be done while, what are the things which you have to remember while creating um, Revit mass. Now, this Revit mass which you created is uh, nothing but, um, it is a kind of a form. It only, uh, it is only a form uh, which allows you to create uh, um, create different buildings. It is only a form. The form which helps you to adapt uh, to create a new building may be called as massing. If someone asks me what is Revit massing, this could be a definition. I have, have uh, I'm not uh, giving a clear textbook de definition, but this could be a definition. It is a form which is created in the software Revit, which will help you to create um, new buildings in the kind of form which you have already imagined, imagined and created. So that is the, um, that is what is called Revit massing. How will it help you? It helps you, um, first and foremost, you already have a form. Um, you have a good idea about the form now, and you can create buildings in that shape and form. That is one advantage. Second advantage is the ability to take out sections of these complicated forms. Now, imagine you have a complicated form uh, you have imagined it, yes, you have sketched it, but then to give a working drawing or uh, give a drawing so that it has to be constructed, um, it will become difficult. In many other softwares, it will become difficult. Uh, and uh, mm, so so that is where Revit comes into the picture. Uh, don't, uh, don't be bothered about what I am creating here. So here, here what, I, what has happened, um, um, the forms which I have created uh, in, in my previous class has gone hidden. Uh, it has become a hidden form and I am trying to get these forms. Uh, I want to add and hide these forms. So that is what I am trying to do here. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay, so these are the forms which I created um, um, in the previous class um, or the masses which I created uh, in the previous class. Now, this could be an example for a mass uh, which has a void here. This could be an example for a mass which has a void here, but it follows the uh, plane of this slope. So that is the specialty in this. This is a void which is created in between the form. Not in the way which we imagined here or here, but it's just traveling across the form. So all these things have been clearly detailed out in my previous class. Okay, now uh, let me go to the elevation, any of these elevations. Okay. Just a minute. So here in floor, okay. So 
So what has happened is these forms are hidden here. I'm just trying to right click unhide category so that I will be able to view them here in level one and level two. For some reason I have hidden it. Now I am going to unhide them. Hmm. Okay. So I do see all the forms and where they are. Okay. Now, uh, if I go to South Elevation again, those forms are hidden. I think I accidentally tapped hide in view earlier. So all these things went hidden. Okay, see, oh, most of the forms which I created are level, uh, limited from level one to level two. Okay, in this case, I will, for this uh, today's class, I think I'll show a form that could travel much more than level one and level two okay and then i will explain um the other uses of massing and that is how it will help you uh, and all that okay how massing helps you to create uh, innovative or uh, totally un unconventional buildings that is what is going to be taught today okay so what I'm trying to do is like I'm trying to uh, you know create I mean uh, create en enough space for me to create a huge building over here those are all pretty small creating a huge building over here okay. how is it going to be and how many levels it has now I'll go to south I will create multiple levels in the first place how do you create levels double L and if you click here pick lines and if you type 4000 uh, and maybe a little more seven eight i have created eight levels from zero one to zero eight Okay, now what am I going to do? I'm going to level one. Okay, I'm going to create one huge form. Huge form. Uh, okay, so what I'll do is that I'll go to massing and site. I'll go to in place mass. Mm, again, I'm creating a particular form this time. Oh, sorry. You can give any name. I just gave it for reference. So here, um, I'm going to create big floor plan. Let's make this, this. You know, you should always create a form uh, within these four viewports. Then only your. And now I've done this in level one. I've created a big. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to. We now I don't see what is there in level one. So what do I do? I'll double click level three, come to floor plan. Here I'll go to underlay and click on level one so that I can see level one. Do you see level one? Yes. Now what I'm going to do is create. Don't bother about that blue line which is seen. Uh, it is not very uh, clear why it shows, but it, it you don't have to worry about it. You just worry about what you are creating. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is um, yeah, okay, somewhere I want to align itself properly. Let's use these diagonal lines. 
Yeah. Okay, now here in level three, I am going to remove these two lines and okay, small arc. I would like to use this arc this side also. So what shall I do? I can say pick axis or even draw line, mirror, draw line. So what I'll do, I'll select this one, say draw line, go to the midpoint, draw a line from that midpoint to this midpoint. Here we are, we have a curved uh, floor plan. Then I will go to level six. So level six, I want to see level three. I prefer seeing level three because that was my previous floor. Now again, use a diagonal. Just to some ways to align these things is not exactly correct. Okay, so. If you want to exactly know where you have to align, oh, there it is a problem. Okay, so I can do one thing from here to here. Where is the midpoint for this? Mm -hmm. So you see this. You can align it to this. Here we have the midpoint. Delete the, these two construction lines. Okay. So here, this is becoming smaller, but I will have a steeper arc here according to my plan. Okay, so will you mirror that? You select this arc alone, double click and select this arc. Go to the midpoint, draw a line from that midpoint to this point. point. You are done. Okay, now sometimes you would like to copy the same thing in the eighth level. How will you do that? You can always select this. Okay, and what you can do is Don't use this copy instead of that. You can use copy to the clipboard, which is wonderful. And go to eighth level and paste a line to selected level. At that time, click on eight. So it will align itself properly level by level. Just in case, if you want to see, click on level eight and give underlay as sixth apply and see so there is no mismatch which means you have done it perfectly you have done it perfectly now what i'm going to do i'm going to select all these things and say create form i went to 3d selected all these lines and give so this is the form which i want to create okay is that clear yeah i'm sure you're clear about it uh what i am going to do is um, what i'm going to do is now what are you going to do with the form that is what i want to explain there are uh, there are other things which i i want to use void form in this which i forgot to tell you okay i'll uh, before i'll give finish just have a good look at it now select this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give edit in place. Okay. Now I'll go to level one. This is level one. Okay. I want to uh, give an offset like this. Okay, 
and I want to connect this. Okay. So now what do I do? I'll see it in 3D. Where is this? This is over here. Now what is my idea? My idea is I want to create a void form here, uh, which can go up. Okay, which can go up. So this is how it goes up. Okay, and say finish. But definitely the building looks like some uh, pyramid of Giza or something like that. Uh, I just want to create a building for giving enough explanation of what I have to teach you today. Maybe not uh, building is not up to the architectural standard or whatever, but this building is going to give whatever explanation which I want to give you today. Okay, now here uh, we have this. Mm, and here comes the facts okay so this form is ready this uh, rabbit mass is ready now how is it going to help now remember this has multi-level it is level one to level eight so uh, if you want to just in case if you want to check it's a huge building so many levels up in the air uh, how are you going to create floor plans now, if I if I ask uh, you know um, entry level person who has just entered a rivet, he might say, "Okay, I'll go to level two, sir, and then what I'll do? I'll create architecture wall and maybe create wall like that. All those things won't work out because." See, it ma for every floor, there is something called cut level or cut plane. So you are trying to see this level two, maybe not here, you'll be seeing it somewhere here. That's how Revit shows. And whatever you are going to do will not create any uh, uh, any building, but it will it will it will create problems for you. It it cannot you need an automated way of creating this form. So that is why we all, all are working on Revit massing. First of all, how will you create floor plan? Okay, so I will select this uh, mass which I've created, go to massing and site, click on floor, and click on create floor. Create floor, select mass, massing floor, select uh, I think I'll come again this is how it is this is where massing is massing is just click on this go to mass floor select the levels whichever you want flows okay so I'll give for all the floors right now and I'll just give okay so what happened is Revit create something creates something called mass floor over here these are these are not floors but these are mass floors what is the difference between floor and mass floor if you look closer floor will have thickness there is no thickness associated to these lines it is just a representation so just like how we are creating massing you are creating mass floors why is it done it is for you to create floors after this how will you create floor again go to massing and site and click on floor by face and you just go about clicking clicking floors or if you are you can just drag like this and click on uh, um, before clicking create floor you Determine what kind of a floor thickness you want to give like most of us will give 150 and just click on create floor now is Where it has created the Flows can you see the flows? Yeah, you really do see flows mm, and uh, Yeah, 
so these floors are automatically look here it is created according to the way uh, the massing is formed so this is how you exactly create floors for uh, the building so this is uh, step one in massing creating the floor you always create a floor first then uh, we can uh, then we can think about uh, doing the other things in the building first after creating masses you create flows nothing else okay okay so here just a minute Okay. This conference will now be recorded. Now, um, this is the most important part in massing because it allows you to create four plans immaterial of what kind of a form do you have. You don't have to really sit and imagine how these how these play in this place how the floor plan will come or how however the however the mass or the form is complicated it is likely to give an automated design uh, for the floor plan so it is only two step maybe I'll undo this once again and I'll show you first one select the mass second one once you select the mass mass floor appears already click on mass floor click on the floor levels for which you need to create floors and just click ok now this one creates something called um, the floor mass floor which is called a mass floor and what is the uh, how will you identify that it is a mass floor it doesn't have any thickness it just shows a prop approx uh, accurately where the floor line will come it just shows where the floor line will come what is the second step second step is go to massing and site uh, click on floor and select whichever floors or all the floors uh, and then select the kind of thickness floor thickness there are different kind of floors imagine timber floor also is there yeah, but we will just pick generic 150 mm uh, floor which is a standard one and say create floor you can click whichever is appropriate for your building there is no force uh, that you have to select generic 150 whichever is the kind of uh, floor which is needed you can select that and give create floor now it creates uh, the floor over here on every level it creates the floor so that is a beauty okay are you clear with it yes okay now what I will do is what is the next advantage of having massing uh, uh, okay there are different ways you can cover this building up you have to have a roof of course for this building so you can click on roof and click on this place where the roof could come isn't it roof comes on top so you can click here and it will highlight where exactly the roof will come you can click on this and say create roof okay the roof is created now only we are uh, creating the roof okay that in addition to that that can be modified maybe you want a small projection like that uh, and make roof okay so it says can't make roof because there's too much of projection maybe you'll have to end up things over here uh, you have to end up okay it doesn't have any problem to cover it up till here that projection it doesn't allow you to do okay we can create another um, no problem this is in eighth level you can go here uh, level eight you can create a roof 
say save project i can give save and in this i'm going to level eight roof roof by footprint just using lines and i don't want any slopes there uh, i am able to you see that i have not done uh, homework correctly for void form uh, that is the reason these are all uh, not projecting in the right direction uh, anyway but it doesn't matter i'll just try to cover it up uh, however possible okay so i want a projection here I'm creating a roof go to 3d do you see that you see that i have created uh, another roof you can use a line and uh, align this okay there are some alignment problems here okay so okay basically this alignment problem is because if you go to level 8 okay and if you come here view range you see this do you see this view range yeah view range or edit i was explaining about the concept called cut plane the cut plane is at the level of 1200 i just want to turn it to zero in this case in level 8 and say apply now what happens uh, that is when see that is when you will see just a minute the cause of the problem is here the cut plane has to be zero and once you have a zero cut plane maybe i can use the roof no slope see i can create perfectly right where you need a, a roof okay there's only one problem this roof is little higher the base offset i can reduce it into 150 and apply it okay oh this is 400 mm roof i don't want 400 mm roof 125 mm roof will do so now it correctly fits over there are you clear about it okay so what is this cut plane cut plane is where the where you see this level eight now uh, you are seeing level 7 and uh, you see that the curve is coming here you are under the impression that that level is here but it is not okay that level if you click on level 7 and if you go to view range where is view range view range and if you go to edit and see the cut plane is level uh, level seven the cut plane is at 1200 higher than the level seven higher than the level seven so let me explain how it is uh, how we can understand this okay this is level seven and level seven is at 2000 i'm sorry 24000 mm uh, probably you are cut plane will be somewhere here you are where you are seeing the floor plan is somewhere here now you will come to this question why should a cut plane is higher than the actual level so it is intentionally kept higher than the actual level because of main uh, there is only one reason why it is kept 1200 higher than the correct level it is for you to see uh, if you if you create a door in the cut plane it has to see the door 
you will definitely see if it is in exactly in 24,000 because door will stick to the floor. No problem. What if if you keep a window, if you are going to keep a window over here, your cut plane will be below window. Window should be cut and it should be seen here. For that reason only, the cut plane is always kept at some um, uh, level which is higher than the floor level. I can explain it in a very, uh, very small demo over here. I, I think I should show, I should explain this cut plane business little more clearly than it is explained before. Okay. So this is the floor plan. This is a, no massing, nothing. This is a simple wall. I am trying to add a door. DR means door and I have added a door. I have clicked here. I have added a door. I have selected the door and clicked the space bar. The door changed to the direction which I wanted. Done. I add a window WN and this window is one um, dumb window. What do you call this? Fixed window. It doesn't open, neither closes. Anyway, I for the purpose of explaining, I have kept this window. Okay. Now what happens is in this window is clearly seen in this floor level. Okay, however, I'm going to create a wall here and I assume that this is a toilet. This is going to be a toilet and I'm going to keep a ventilator here. Okay, ventilator is nothing but another window with a different sill level and a different size uh, size for the window. What is the size of this window? 406 by, what is the size of the window? 406. Yeah, so this is the size of the window. 406 by uh, 610. Okay, now let's all go to, this is north, isn't it? Let's go to the north. Let's see it in the north. Now, this is the window. Okay, this window is here and there's one more window here. Okay, can you see that? Okay, so uh, uh, I understand that cut plane, okay, will actually be um, somewhere here. Cut plane is thousand. Where is the cut plane for level one? Click on level one. Go to view range, click on edit, 1200 is the cut plane. Now, let me explain one fact. I am going to adjust this cut plane into zero. I don't see anything. I don't even see wall, window, nothing. So, I will give this cut plane as 150 apply. What do I see? I do see all the door and the wall okay now i will show you something else i'll go to the north where is this sill level 915 what i'm going to show you is i'll go to level one and go to cut plane uh, view range and say 900 nothing seen because the sill level is 915. So I'll give 915. Still nothing is seen. I give 916. Something is seen. One number makes the difference. From there only, window starts showing up. Did you understand? So this is the whole point of the cut plane. Cut plane is where the level cuts the floor or wall or whatever it is and try to project it to you where there is a cut. Okay, now, now there is one more funny thing. Now what I'm going to, I don't have patience and time much. So what I'm, oh, this is the wall. So this wall is too tall. I don't want it to grow to eight and okay. What is my point is I'm selecting this and Okay, you all know how to insert a window. I'll go to insert, load family. I'm going to load a new type of window. Uh, libraries, metric, window. Some good looking window I want to add. 
Okay. Okay. You will have real good looking window from uh, Revit City dot com or any other online forums where you where revit family files revit family rfa stands for revit family you will get window family files many files will be available there you can download and use one of them you don't have to get stuck with only uh, these things which is provided by default now i select this and i have loaded that new family and i am trying to place it here okay that looks wonderful okay so uh, uh, here is the okay so this is the window okay now what i want to do with this is i want to make it a, a bathroom window kind of a thing so i just aligned I, what i did just now is a l uh, click this top alignment and click this top alignment so that it just gets connected to that level now let me see what about the cut plane your yeah, cut plane beautifully shows this window but doesn't show this window the window is there only if you bring your mouse towards that it shows the window what should i do now please tell me now what should i do i'll clearly explain go to level uh, say northern side uh okay if you can measure from here to here what is it 200 and 205 uh, 2205 now if you can measure again from here to here what is it 1595 if you give 1600 both will be seen in the cut plane so i will you go i'll go to level uh, one uh, go to view range sometimes your view range will be where sometimes the view range will be there it might be missing you just have to scroll these things and see how much did i say is a better level you can give 1600 okay and give apply and here we are you see the bathroom ventilator you see the window you see the door etc etc so this is how cut plane works you have to understand the usage of cut plane when i showed you how to create one more slab i have not given a clear demo on how to work on cut plane so that is the reason i showed it here okay i think you are clear with the roof and the floor how did i add the roof and the floor now what are the other things now this is a very um, uh, difficult form i don't think you can create what wall for the so much of slanting building i don't think you can create wall uh, let me try but that is not the right thing at least practically you won't be able to do uh, somehow in revit it allows you to create wall uh, but i'll just show you you if you in revit how to create wall for massing go to massing click on wall okay in this area it will be easy for you to create wall yeah it is easy for you to create wall because it is one just one vertical thing okay so however i don't i don't think at least practically you can create a wall like this 200 mm thick wall i don't think you can create maybe different materials are there i don't know normal ways you cannot build a wall like this it might fall down if you have different material or if you have a, a, a big time structural consultancy to you know enable you to create a wall like this maybe it is possible i don't know i don't think it is possible in a by normal means so i usually give wall wherever it is possible to give wall the rest what you are supposed to do i showed you how to create a wall just just go to massing click on wall and click on the side of the mass where the wall has to project itself so wall has come already now what is the other thing you have to uh, you can make use of you can make use of something called curtain system and okay now curtain system is not nothing but the structural glazing you will find in all the software buildings software parks um, now uh, mostly you will see in all the software parks that is the structural uh, glazing so this is a curtain system curtain system is the name given here in revit click on curtain system and say what is the size of the curtain 
or the curtain size means each glazing size this one which they have given is too big 1500 mm by 3000 mm roughly around 10 feet by 5 feet i don't think we are going in for such huge sizes so i'll just give a date and say duplicate i want to create a new uh, type of system i'll give 300 by 600 which is small enough i uh, uh, which is okay 600 mm that is the size which i am giving and here instead of 3000 i'll give 600 and here in thousands so of 1500 i'll give 300 and be done with it so that is the size now what i'll do i'll click wherever i want curtain system okay so create system so the computer will take some time for for it to create calculate and create it is not simply done uh, by random it the computer takes some time for it to so it took some time for it to create a curtain system of that size i think the size which i gave is too small uh, that also would have added a trouble uh, to it mm, maybe i'll try a different size i give duplicate i will give um, i'll give 900 by 1800 mm that's the name and then here i'll give 900 i'm sorry i'll give 1800 by 900 so okay now let me try creating a curtain system in that size uh, okay now also it takes some time so now this time it was a bit more faster than what i thought okay so i think i'll go to the back okay this one is too small okay so this one is fairly good uh, now i am i'm trying for the other side i'll go where how like how do i create curtain system uh, click on curtain system create system and click on it and create system once again so again it is going to create curtain system yeah once again okay so it has created here okay now uh, 
once again create the front side and create system. Okay, done. So this side you have wall only front. This place is what is left behind. Everything else is mentioned. This is a curtain system. This is a curtain system. This is a curtain system. Behind is a curtain system. Okay, right in front. What to do? Now this time in front also I have decided to create curtain system. Maybe a bigger size, the original size, 1500 by 300 create system. I'm going to click here and create system once again. So it's quickly done. That is also done. These two sides wall, rest everything else is a curtain system. Now I noticed that this side, I mean, the, my behind side over here, this back side of this building, this curtain system is way too small. I want to, you know, delete it. How will I delete it? I'll go click here and say unpin. Just click on that. Okay, and delete. Okay. Click on that, and delete. How did I do that? So, you just have to go. Click on that. It should say curtain system grid. Just press delete. Okay, you have to unpin. I forgot to tell you that. I have to click unpin, which means uh, a pin is something like read only in files. So you cannot delete that. If you unpin, it will allow you to delete it or do any changes. Once you unpin, you select the curtain system. It should come as curtain system. Just press delete. It is gone. Processing. So it takes some time, but it does the job. What happened? Okay, I've unpinned it. Okay, unpin will be an icon like this. You can, I'm just zooming in and showing you. Unpin, just Mm. Just getting into trouble. Just clarify this, okay? So curtain system grid lines. I've selected curtain system grid line. I've unpinned. After unpinning,
This conference will now be recorded. So what you have to do is that you just come a little close and you can select one of these lines, press tab and click again. So you will kind of get this logo, curtain system. Just press delete and it will go. So I'll just make it clear once again. There was some confusion indeed before deleting. This is how it is. You don't have to do anything. Just come close to it. Select one of these grid lines. And press tab. And click. Press tab and click and then you will get this window kind of a symbol. Press delete and your curtain system will vanish away. Now what I wanted to show you is you just have to click on curtain system. I want to give this big curtain system behind. So I'll click create and click behind and create system again. So I want to see how it how different it is when it is given behind the building. Yeah, not too bad. So this is how you create a curtain system for the building which has uh, difficult uh, forms okay like i told you roof has to be roof a wall that can be built straight up yes you can have this if you have a solid curvature you can use curtain system and uh, that will help you to create the building in the next class i will be showing how to show glazing how to how to show glass uh, glazing and how to show solid uh, glazing that is like ACP aluminium uh, composite panels how to show that and how to place doors and windows and curtain glazing where it is possible to keep uh, keep door and window where it is not possible why all those questions I will clearly answer in the next class so right now uh, this will be the end of the class so um, okay the advantage of all this of course you can go to level one and just click on section draw a section so automatically something called section pops up in this list you go and you see the section you will see how the building section is clearly it will show the floor levels very clearly how the uh, elevation will look like I mean the front side of it will look like all those are clearly seen so it 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 sort of clearly shows the side also so I have shown this side so in section it shows this side okay now I'll just flip the side of the section I'll just flip click here it shows this the other side how is the other side you go here uh, and there is no uh, place for the entrance here so it shows like this so this is the advantage of creating mass in revit okay the other advantage is like uh, i'll create one more section uh, from here uh, click and draw draw the section like this I'll move this plus arrow press arrow key and bring it like this now this it now this section is going to start from here and limit till here maybe yeah this this part this is what i want to see so you come here you'll see section two this is how it is going to be so it will clearly show what will happen where all these descriptions are clearly shown in that okay now uh, i'll go to floor one i i don't want to see that i want to see only till here uh, even then it will show See, it is showing till there. The other things it is not shown because the, the it is it is ending over there. So this is how Revit section works and help you to create wonderful building uh, using massing and sections. So thank you for watching. I will share. Uh, I will come up with the 
uh, other important things which are available in revit massing in the next class tomorrow thank you bye